Okay, so let's do let's do a quick refresher on a few things here. Let's start with the CMHC insurance to create some context here. Now, CMHC, Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, they've come up once or twice in the show, uh, a crown corp that provides mortgage loan insurance. And that insurance is mandatory for home buyers who have a down payment of less than 20% of the home's purchase price because they're in a higher risk position. And basically the CMHC wants to eliminate risk on the banks. Yeah, and exactly. And that that insurance protects the banks, that that lender, if the borrower defaults on that mortgage. Yeah. So it's for the bank, like you as the home buyer don't benefit from the insurance, right? It's an important distinction from my perspective. Yeah, for sure. Now, currently CMHC insures mortgages for homes that are valued up to $1 million. This cap has been in place since 2012. Now, this is where you see that important distinction between a property listed at 999000 versus anything over that $1 million threshold. Yeah. And you can see a lot of activity in the, in the price range below a million bucks. Like, cause, cause again, um, Bank of Canada states that like uh, almost 50% of buyers are first time buyers, but, um, basically that, that, you know, like there was that bidding war earlier in the year, I think in February, right. In, in Mississauga, it was like a house. It was listed at like, it was under listed a lot, 650 or something like that. And ended up getting like 30 or like 50 offers, but it sold for nine, 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 nine. Why? Yeah. Because it's a CMHC <laughs> insured buyer, not like 50 offers and not a single person paid more than a million dollars for it. And that just showed me at least where all of the demand was in the market. So that insurance pre- premium that you mentioned is typically added to the mortgage and paid out over the life of the loan. Yeah, exactly. And that premium rate can vary based on the size of the down payment that that buyer is going to use. And that ranges for anywhere from, let's say, 2.8 uh, to 4% of the loan amount. And the top end, that 4%, you pay the higher premium, the lower the down payment you use. So 4% if you use a 5% down payment, which means if you're a 5% uh, down buyer, you have less than 1% equity in your house. Yeah. So a lot of this sounds kind of like a bad deal, to be honest. Like why would someone want to have a longer amortization? I mean, my honest answer is that we are a debt obsessed country and we have a financial literacy problem in Canada. And like this <laughs> yep. policy move would just um, drive that home for me. Like um, a lot of people say that Canadians think about the payment rather than the price. Even when you know people are shopping and negotiating for the price on a house, they negotiate based on what the bank says they can afford based on their payment, not what they actually feel the price is worth. Most people actually wouldn't really know what a, what a house is worth. So given that, I would say most people feel that they just uh, became able to to buy a little bit more house for a lower monthly payment. And honestly, a lot of people will do it. I on, I think that this policy will be very, very well utilized, which it bothers me a little bit because you're just basically adding, you know, young people, first time home buyers, you're adding another five years in which they have to, they're, they're in debt now. Um, and you're increasing the amount of interest that they have to pay on said debt by 26%. So it's not like you could, I think it's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that that's not like a good outcome from my perspective, more interest, longer time indebted. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, I think like right now I would say most buyers max their budget and take the lowest payment they can get. And this just, um, encourages more of that behavior. Yeah, it kind of fuels fuels that fire that we've been trying to to dampen for for a while and warn against, right? And you know, this kicks that proverbial can uh, just another five years down the road, right? I mean, the psychology of Canadians, quote unquote, buying payments rather than focusing on the overall price of things is largely driven by affordability perceptions and budget management. Now, this behavior is particularly evident in big ticket purchases like mortgages or car loans, where buyers are often more concerned with whether they can manage that monthly payment than the total actual cost of the asset, whatever they're buying, right? That car or that house. Yeah, I think... You know, if you look at a mortgage, the mortgage as an example, and we'll we'll use a car payment as an example as well, because I think that this is a good one that a lot of people can really think about it more clearly. Um, 
when purchasing a home, many Canadians are focused on the monthly mortgage payment and it's not their fault. Like that's literally what the bank uses to decide they use your mortgage yeah, payment as a the way it's been sold income. When, when we measure affordability in Canada, it's mortgage payment as a percentage of income or income to payment, right? Not income to price in a lot of cases. You know, European entities, you'll see they'll use price to income. Here we use mortgage payment to income. Um, even even rents, it's like always, what is it per, as a percentage of your monthly income? So this is the income versus expenses thing, right? People manage their finances on a monthly basis. You know, you pay bills on a monthly basis. And so people often consider how much they can allocate from their income to their monthly mortgage payment without stretching their budget. They think about it in like that one at a time increments. But it's not really one at a time increments because we're talking about long term debt here, right? Mortgage terms often span 25 to now 30 years. And this long amortization period lowers monthly payments, making the overall cost of a home seemingly more manageable, even if the total cost of the loan, including, of course, interest, which we can't forget about, is actually much higher. And this is where you end up with that like interest rate sensitivity. So even slight changes in interest rates significantly affect monthly payments, N not just like on the ones that you already have, but if you're a buyer who's in the market, you know, if rates go up now, all of a sudden your affordability changes drastically because you're not buying based on the price, you're buying based on the interest rate. So a rise in interest rates would force buyers to reconsider the house they can even afford. And even if the price itself hasn't changed, right? And this was a big factor in the drop that we saw in prices in 2022, because buyers basically said, oh my goodness, I can't afford anything on the market anymore. And even as prices went down, there weren't buyers piling into the market, even though house price declines outpaced interest rate increases. And it's because that interest rate sensitivity is impacted um, with the way buyers perceived the cost of a house on a monthly basis, not on a price basis. Yeah, exactly. Now talk about perceiving and that perception and, and that kind of psychology behind this, this way of thinking, right? Like lenders will often present that maximum monthly payment, right? That's literally the way that it's taught, the way that's the way that it's sold. Um, so they'll present that maximum monthly payment that a buyer can qualify for, leading them to anchor their decision on that dollar figure rather than trying to buy, you know, let's say a less expensive home. How dare you suggest that somebody ought to buy a less expensive <laughs> home? Um, that is financial advice, actually. Yeah. That's the first time I can say that. So uh, like I mentioned that another easy way to think about it is car loans, right? I think it's probably the next most common like amortized credit product. Um, a similar pattern occurs with this, right? Like I feel like when I first started looking like when I was young, I, I used to buy, uh, you know, like used cars and I was always afraid of like these car payments. And I, f I think it was like five years was like the max, you know, and now it seems like, you know, they've realized that buyers often care more about the monthly car payment. You go to a, a car dealership or a used car dealership or whatever. And they're like, they're, they're basically mortgage brokers. Like they make all their money selling the debt, <laughs> not the car, which is crazy. Right. Yeah. Um, but people, um, they care more about that monthly payment than the total price of the vehicle. Yeah, so let's let's dive in a bit deeper into into this car loan example. So, let's say car dealers, they I mean again, as you just said Dan, they often advertise vehicles based on that monthly mortgage payment rather than the sticker price, right? Think about this, you know, 399 a month for 72 months rather than hey, buy this $80,000 minivan that you probably don't need or an $80,000 truck or, you know, that brand new white BMW because you just became a real estate agent. Now, you know, making the purchase seemingly perceptively more affordable even though that total paid over time is actually a lot higher because you stretch that payment out and you're paying more interest. Yeah. You know, when you buy a new vehicle, finance it, they give you that like sheet at the end that says like, here's the total cost of ownership. And um, it bakes in all your interest payments and all of that stuff. They don't have that for housing, right? But I imagine it would make pe most people barf if they saw how much uh, interest they were paying and what their total cost of owning that house was over a 25 year am. But anyway, um, just like mortgages that you're getting these longer loan terms, right? Six to eight years now. And this has made vehicles appear more affordable by lowering monthly payments, even though it increases the overall cost because you're paying interest for a longer period of time and interest is calculated on an annual basis. Buyers, again, prioritize keeping the monthly payments within their budget, even if it means extending the loan and paying more in the long run.
Yeah, exactly. And this is where we have to kind of consider that, you know, your lifestyle versus your expenditure versus your cost. Now, many Canadians are happy to justify higher payments for that said lifestyle that we're all trying to to achieve. Now, vehicles, by reasoning that if you can, uh, you know, quote unquote, afford that monthly payment, the total cost really doesn't matter as much. Yeah, it's 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 kind of a mess. like i don't i don't love this i think that it's kind of um it's not good and and so i guess the the question would be like why do canadians focus on payment I, and i i do think that our economy like you go to the us like not everyone's driving a brand new car in canada like there's and and maybe that has something to do with like climate and there's so much salt on the roads here or whatever i don't know but they like, giving everybody the benefit of the doubt but i honestly think it's just we're such a credit fueled economy yeah, I mean, you know, you, you mentioned the states, you know, I was I was recently in Europe and one of the main things I saw was the amount, like, there must be, you know, 15, 20% of the cars on the road must be brand new cars. Whereas you come back to Canada and it's got to be like 80% of, of the cars are probably, you know, five yeah, years like, or less. Yeah. yeah, like probably still have some type of financing on them. Yeah. Um, yeah, so a big piece of this comes from you know, what I would call mental accounting. People organize their financial lives into budgets and they think that re most people really think in terms of, because we're not like a wealthy society here in Canada. And I'm not saying that to be like negative. Our household savings rates aren't massive compared to other countries. We don't have a ton of equity and if or cash. And if we do, most of our equity or, or, or household savings is trapped in our houses as equity. Um, and so people think about, okay, what can I afford based on my income? because we we have always had job security here in Canada for for a pretty long time and you know the last recession we didn't get hit that hard i think that's about to change personally if throw a disclaimer in there but most people think about what can i afford on a monthly basis rather than a large lump sum and that makes it easier to mentally manage these expenses right it's almost like you're rationalizing oh it's not that bad right but then you yeah, you don't think oh i just paid 150 grand for a vehicle you're like oh yeah i can i'm i can afford to pay for this for 8 years yeah, exactly. You, we've just we've normalized the you know the debt that we're in, right? And you know, in a low interest rate environment, which we were in for for quite a while, Canadians have become very comfortable with high levels of debt. And the focus, again, Dan, as you were saying, has shifted from "Hey, I can afford this" to "Hey, I can service this debt. I can manage these payments," rather than minimizing debt or trying to understand what the actual total cost is over time. Yeah, for sure. And then I think like in, you know, we always talk about delayed gratification, like making sacrifices today that benefit you in the future. D the debt and focus on payments is the opposite. It's delaying consequences, right? So since the total cost of a mortgage or a car loan is paid out over many years, the long-term financial burden feels very distant. It's out of sight, out of mind, right? The immediacy of the mon monthly payments feels more real and manageable. Yeah, I mean, I wonder how they're going to tier the CMHC down payment structure when they do increase it to 1.5 million. So here's a format for down payment requirements and mortgage insurance. So CMHC mortgage insurance, this is the current structure that goes up to $1 million. Okay, so homes under $500,000, the minimum down payment of 5% for the first $500,000. The next piece is homes between 500,000 and that 999,000, that 999,999 minimum down payment of 5%, still going back on that first 500,000, and then 10% on the portion between that 500 and that 999,999. 999. Um, and then we get to the homes that are $1 million and over. Now, CMHC insurance is not available for homes of that price category. Conventional mortgages, which are 20% down, are required for properties $1 million or more. So I came up with sort of like a potential extension to 1.5 million. And this is my hypothetical format, which would, you know, because I don't think there's details on it, but starting December 15th, if CMHC were to extend insurance coverage for properties up to 1.5 million, Here's what I think it would look like. 5% up to the first 500,000, then 10% on the portion between 500 and 999, and then 15 to 20%. So they would require probably that full amount on the, the payment of the portion or on the portion between one and 1 1.5 million. Yeah, very interesting. And and I'd take a wild guess and say you're probably not so far off. And if anyone from CMHC is listening to this, feel free to use Dan's idea. <laughs> um, 
the uh so let's take let's take your example dan and actually run some calculations on it for a theoretical 1.5 million dollar home okay so the, again first five hundred thousand dollars five percent uh that is twenty five thousand dollars cash needed then we look at that portion between five hundred and nine ninety nine. Uh, so that's ten percent of that first five hundred thousand. So it's another fifty grand. And then we look at the portion between that one and that one point five million. Assuming with Dan's new tier with fifteen percent down, so fifteen percent of five hundred thousand is seventy five thousand dollars. So that total down payment, you've got the twenty five thousand. For the first five hundred thousand, fifty thousand for that five hundred to the nine ninety nine, and seventy five thousand for that one to one point five million, which brings you to a grand total of one hundred fifty thousand dollars, ten percent of one point five million, which is some pretty crazy savings from what we are dealing with currently. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty good guess, honestly. I think um, the crazy part is that this would get you like the best rates in the market. Like if you're an insured borrower, I think you typically get the best rates, right? And you also, if you're a first time home buyer, a home buyer period, you get tax free capital gains. And so this is where we've created this kind of perverse incentive for people to like take as much leverage as possible and buy the most expensive house that we possibly can. And, um, and just basically like ride the capital gains, you know, thing in, in the primary residence, um, and this, I, th I think this is why we're having this conversation on the Canadian Real Estate Investor Podcast because most people treat their houses like they are a, like they are an investor, right? 